Okay, we're going to be talking. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, students with special abilities and challenges, and this is going to be a guide for parents who want their kids to excel and want their kids to excel not in spite of, but maybe be even because of their special abilities and challenges they might have that are, might be permanent or temporary. And I'm really, uh, really excited to have two special guests today in our podcast. It's going to be Laura Sanborn, Senior Master Laura Sanborn. She hasn't updated her title on her uh, video yet. And uh, Mr. Dwayne Fleet, fourth degree black belt from Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I'm really excited to have both you guys here today. And you can read a little bit about me as well, but most of the people have, uh, that have watched these have, have heard about me. We're going to be talking about, well, thanks a lot, guys, for being here. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. Yeah, a little audio yeah. check there to make sure you guys were there. Um, so we're going to be talking about four different areas in this series of podcasts that we're doing. Uh, we're going to be focusing today on kids with physical challenges. So if you're a parent of a kid that has some physical challenges, some physical special abilities, we'll talk about how to work with them. Um, and, and for all of these, uh, not just in martial arts and the activity that we like to, to recommend to, to kids and, and to, to adults and, and to everybody, but maybe in some other physical activities, how to work with your kids to, um, to, to make... Um, to enhance what they're doing uh, in all the other activities that they do in the in the maybe in therapies that they do and how martial arts can help with that and and use this as a launch pad for for excellence in, in the future in their future life that they're going to have and uh, so we're going to talk about kids with physical challenges kids with cognitive challenges um, and in all areas we work with kids with uh, everything from uh, autism down syndrome um, and um, kids with Tourette syndrome, uh, it, many, many, many different physical challenges. Um, and then we're going to talk about, we're going to have another uh, podcast on working with adults with, with these challenges so that if you're an adult with some challenges and you're going, hey, can I do these activities, um, do martial arts or another activity like this? How can I, how can I best work um, on, on um uh, uh, with them for myself and then we're gonna have another uh we're gonna have another podcast on temporary challenges so sometimes you're everything's fine and then you you know you break your ankle and uh, how do you keep doing an activity like this uh during that time that you broke an ankle an ankle how do you continue to do a, a sport or an activity or what we're suggesting that you do and why should you should you keep doing um uh, should you keep doing this activity or should you just sit sit and, and rest and and uh, wait till you get better till you do it is there a reason why you should uh, continue through that time so we'll talk about temporary challenges and uh, what's the reason that you should uh, continue during those times so we're gonna have four different podcasts that we're going to address and then we'll be talking about some things with uh, to, to do with all these so let's talk about physical challenges and one of the things with physical challenges is um, that that we like to talk about when we're talking about our favorite activity martial arts is and you guys chip in here when we when we talk about this but one of the things that's that's different about the type of activity you do and we're talking about martial arts but if you're talking about a, a physical activity that's team oriented versus individual and martial arts is very individual it may seem if you watched too many movies like Cobra Kai that's very popular, or uh, you watch movies on TV and you see uh, see people in martial arts, you think about people fighting, two people fighting together. But most of martial arts is you training on your own in a group. So you might be in a group, but you're doing things relative to you to yourself. You're you're working on the. Uh, material and techniques and things you're doing for the most part on your own um, in the group. So if you're stronger or taller or slower or faster or or whatever wherever state you're at, you can um, you, you can move at whatever pace you need to move so that you continually get better. So that's one thing that's different about what we do in martial arts from a physical point of view than what is important in a lot of other activities and a lot of other activities that are competitive, like, uh, let's say, soccer or football. If you're in uh, one of those sports and you're with a team, what happens is if you're not faster then you know, they'll steal the ball from you or if you're not big and strong. In football, the you know the guy's going to get around you, or they're going to tackle you. So there's there's a relative ability level that's really important in those other sports. 
And if you, you know, if you're playing t-ball, I think it's kind of ironic when people say, well, they don't keep score, but everybody knows when somebody hit the ball really far and everybody cheers really loud when somebody hit the ball really far or somebody caught the ball really good, everybody cheers really loud. And if somebody hit the ball and it kind of dribbled a little bit, little ways, um, everybody goes, oh, that's okay. So everybody knows who did really well, relatively speaking, to the other students. Whereas in something like what we do, or frankly, a lot of other acti- there's a, other activities that are important like that. For example, if a kid's learning to swim, they need to learn and grow at whatever pace they 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 can because they you know have to learn to swim. They they can't swim faster than they can learn. So th- think about that as a relevant activity. So there's there's a difference in the type of activity that we're doing so that people are naturally going to learn at the pace that they need to learn. Um, And that's relevant to the physical skill that they have. So even even people that don't have any physical challenges are always going to learn at the skill level and the speed that they're going to learn. And uh, Senior Master Sambor and Mr. Fleas, why don't you pick up from there? What do you think is different about martial arts as an activity versus or other activities that are like that, if we can think of some other ones, versus a lot of the other activities that people do that are um, kind of might sound similar to people. One thing that we don't do is compare one student to another student unless they're in a tournament where that's what it's designed for. So there's no, oh, you're not as good as that student over there, so you're not going to rank, you're not going to increase in rank, you're not going to achieve the goals that we set because you're not as good as somebody else in class. So it's not a comparative sport in any way, unless you do a tournament, which is obviously designed for comparison on its own. But in a class, everybody does what they do and they improve on their own and at their speed and at their level. So they can still achieve rank. They can still achieve goals. They can still get better at the sport without it mattering what the kid next to them does. Yeah. And those tournaments are optional, right? I mean, only about yes. five to 10% of the students that we have are interested in doing those things. And they have tournaments that are specifically designed at a certain co- competition level for kids with cognitive challenges and physical challenges so that if they need to, they can compete just like special Olympics. They can compete at different levels that they are able to. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, it sir. can also be, sorry. Yes, this was, um, the students in the class are, are side by side with other typical students so that they have some good examples to follow through with um, so they can do the best they can while they're in the class too. So we don't separate them by, by their abilities in that respect. So in our classes, they're all together. Right. So one thing that we one thing that we just hit on is that the physical um, aptitude is not relevant. Right. But physical progress is. So what we want to see is it, if you, it, you know, if you were a student that had maybe an injury, in fact, I, there's a, a really in Arizona here where I'm sitting is a, a student. Um, uh, we, we always use uh, proper names like Mr. Fleas. You hear me call him Mr. Fleas, Mr. Fleas and Senior Master Sanborn, Senior Master Sanborn. There's a student called uh, her name is Miss Cox, C-O-X, and she's uh, uh, well known because she was born without arms. And one of the things she did when she started martial arts, she didn't really have a lot of other activities that she did, but she did martial arts. And she learned to do, um, well, obviously a lot of the moves that we would do in martial arts require arms. She didn't have arms. So she learned to do the arm movements with her feet. So she copied um, all the same moves that we did with our arms. She did them with her feet. So we still required her to do physical, those same physical moves and make the same progress, but with her feet. So if you were born without a leg or without an arm or without something, if you had a physical challenge, just like we're talking about for physical things, we still require physical progress, but it's from wherever you're at and with whatever ability you have. And that becomes in contrast to if I'm, um, 
if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to be in a competitive sport, now it's only going to be your aptitude is very relevant. Your progress may not be, re- your progress is also relevant too. I mean, you want to get better at that sport, but your aptitude is super relevant. Your progress is also relevant, but your aptitude is not relevant is is relevant too. In what we do, the aptitude, what you start at is not relevant, but your progress is. Your progress is. So that's one thing. And Mr. Fleas, you were hitting on something and you could expand on that a little bit, but they they work as a group, even though they're individuals, they're still going to be within a group. So one of the things that um, we have different ability levels and one's called one is generally a preschool group. Another group is generally an elementary and family age group where the families and elementary age kids can work together. And then there's generally an adult group where the if, if you want to do something a little bit more high intensity. So there's ability groupings, but within those ability groupings, whatever your um, physical abilities can match, that's where everybody would go. So they still work as a group. So if, you know, if you didn't, if you had a challenge, if maybe you were in a wheelchair, you'd still be able to work in with a group. So the other kids, um, if if we're talking about kids now, the other kids would be able to learn from each other and be able to work together still. And you were talking about that a little bit. Did you want to add more onto that? Oh, yes, sir. Um, That's what we've had with ours. Um, students in the wheelchairs, they work side by side with the with the typical kids, so that um, one, our typical kids get experience with with others in wheelchairs or walkers or whatever they need to move around and be mobile, and then they work together and and uh, become good classmates together and help each other out. So yes. So I think the kids with physical challenges, I mean, they really have to live in the rest of the world. So the the class ends up looking like the rest of the world. So what they what they learn is is relevant to the way the rest of the world works. The rest of the world isn't going to comply with the way that uh, their their challenges. You know, so we work within the challenge, but it's also it's group work within their individual work as well. Right. So that's that's another important point. Um, so that's, that's important. So physical aptitude, not being relevant, physical progress is relevant. We still challenge them. So even if there's, um, the person I mentioned without the arms, she still had to do everything. She still had to move, make progress, move forward. It was just adapted to fit what was going to happen. We get asked a lot to specialize it's important to understand about the adaptations we get asked frequently to come to a clinic or come to a special school or come to a group that's um that's specializing for whatever whether it's a cognitive um group specialty that works with kids with autism or a a physical a group that works with kids that are uh, maybe it's a clinic that works with kids that have uh, physical challenges and they do physical therapy or or other things. And um, they want us to come and do like a special program for their kids. And we don't want to ever do that. What we want to do is have those kids come to us. Number one, because of this reason, because we want them to work with the group of all the other kids. But number two, and because, well, number two, because we can handle them really well, because we're very experienced and we teach all of our instructors to be well-trained, which is number three here, is the instructors are trained to handle all the, the kids of all these different groupings. But number three is they, they also need to be in a physical environment that's appropriate for this type of work. So they've got the right kind of floor, they've got the right kind of environment, they've got the right kind of, um, in even the right kind of culture to work around. So it's the the culture, as, as people have heard us talk, where we say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am to each other. We call each other by proper names. There's part of a culture of respect and discipline that's that's a big part of what we're doing. It's not just them learning to um, punch and kick and and do things that people might have a perception of martial arts. Because I would say the fourth thing here, and probably the most important thing, is there's a there's discipline, respect, and life skills. Draw that better. 
Yeah. Um, life lessons that we're teaching that sometimes I think when kids have physical challenges or other challenges that we go, well, we've got these other challenges to deal with. So these, you know, things like writing back behind what Mr. Fleece has is respect right on the wall and right in back of senior master Samborn, there's our personal victory program. It's probably hard to see within the video of the patches that we use and the, the stars that we give out when, when students are, doing proper things outside of the academy, um, that's all part of what needs to be built into a program that it doesn't matter what their challenges are, we're still gonna ask for that kind of behavior, ask for improvement in mental progress as well, in life progress, in um, development that we wanna have that's that's out, outside of these other challenges that the student's gonna have. So there's more to what we do than just the physical training. You guys want to add anything on to what I what I added? Yes, sir. Um, part of it is our expectations of the student. Um, we expect them to do what we're telling them to do to the best of their ability, not give us an excuse on, oh, but I've never been able to do that. So because of my this, that, or the other, um, we expect them to do it. And so they step up and do it. Um, I've had a student who we went to his school for autism and physical disabilities and physical special abilities where he was the only one who performed a physical uh, talent show. And I had him doing full weapons and breaking boards in front of his class. And his PE teacher comes up to me later and says, how did you get him to do that? I said, I expected him to do it. I told him to do it and he it, my expectation was that he was going to do it. Now we did it to the best of his ability, but he stepped up and did it and then eventually worked his way to black belt and beyond. So, but it was based on the fact that we expect him to do it, not give us excuses on why he can't or his parents going, but, but you can't ask him to do that. No, you brought him to us because we want him to achieve high goals and become a black belt and beyond. And for him to do that, he's got to do what we expect of him. And that's what he did. Yeah, that's that's high expectations. They're reasonable expectations. But when you have yes. reasonable expectations that we push and push and push and push and push them up and up and up and expect more and expect more and expect more, then we're going to have excellence and success for all the students that we have. We expect excellent success for all the students we have. And that's when the kids with some challenges can, can actually get more success from a relative point of view than a child that comes in that's already you know, a great athlete, that's already um, got a lot of things going for them. You know, Their development may be great, their um, aptitude may be great, but the change in the change from where they started to where they get to may not be as big. It may not be as noticeable yes. as that child that you're, just, you're talking about right now. Yes. And the impact that that's going to have on the rest of their life, the impact that that's going to have when they're an adult and when the other challenges that come up that are going to feel totally different or they're going to look totally different, but inside they're going to feel very similar. They're going to be able to do the things that the other adults at that point that have similar challenges, you know, they're not going to do that. They might be adults that are on disability. They might be adults that are doing lesser jobs. And the students that we would expect to have are going to be doing, you know, really successful jobs, going to be in uh, positions of authority, going to be able to com communicate and talk to people, going to be able to do excellent things. Those are the kind of expectations that we have of them when they finish doing all the stuff that we're talking about here. It changed his family life too, the dynamics in his family, because they had, he had one parent who.
Mr. Fleas, did you lose the audio there, Master Sanborn? Did you? I did. You, we lost the audio on you, Master Sanborn. It, it looked like it was a really good point, ma'am. <laughs> we lost your audio. Can you hear us okay? It did sound like a really great point. I was trying to get it back. <laughs> Nope, we still don't have you. But we got a good recording of what was probably an awesome point. <laughs> yes, we can just dub that in later. <laughs> we'll dub in a, a Master Sam Ward's good point that's going to look like a, 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 a movie. Uh, Mr. Fleas, but you've had some students that have had some amazing success, though, that, from some physical challenges as well. Uh, yes, sir. Um, even right now, currently we have, uh, well, he's a teenager now. He started with this when he was an elementary school age. <clears throat> and he didn't think that he could do martial arts. His, he had a spinal injury and his legs didn't function properly and his arms don't function properly. He has special walkers that he uses and sometimes a wheelchair. So we had to find things that he could do and change them so that he could accomplish his goals. And, and he's he's been doing a fab, fantastic job at that right now. And he's working towards his first degree black belt pretty soon. Yeah, I, I mean, those are the kids that when they, when they get to that, our goal is getting them to their black belt and second degree and third degree black belt. And that's what we talk about in our school. But what we're really after is the results internally both to the student and to the family that they see these kind of successes. And I think where Senior Master Sam Warren was going is where, where we see these kind of achievements that then we can see the other things that they can create, the other things that they can achieve, the other things they can do. My example, I'll use it in the, when we get to um, cognitive challenges, I'll use my son as an example, but um, he didn't have any physical challenges, but um, my son was born with autism and in, was diagnosed with autism when he was two and a half years old. So we had those physical, those uh, cognitive challenges to overcome, but I'll tell that story when we do our next podcast. Um, I think that's probably good to cover. We had five things. One is that they're, that they're planned. I mean, we have expectations not of aptitude, but expectations of progress. We want to have people in a group and we have group work within their individual success. So we'd expect them to be working with a group. And that's why when we have companies that uh, are working with kids and they want us to come and do classes, we're happy to do a class or two or work with them. We're happy to talk and work with the kids. We're happy to do that on a temporary basis. We really want them in our academy so they get to see the culture and environment and get to hear people uh, treat each other the way that they get treated. Not that they don't do that well in their in their schools or in their uh, organizations, but we want to make sure that they do treat them really well. Um, we want to have high expectations for everybody. Uh, and those expectations are something we want you guys as parents and the people that are listening to to remember the stories that we're telling so that you can build up really, really high expectations. We've got lots and lots and lots of those kind of stories. And uh, those are things that we want to make sure we keep and preserve uh, with all the students that we have. Master Sam, did you get your audio back? Yes, sir. Oh, we did. We found out what was yeah. wrong. No, sir. Oh, we didn't find out. It was just magically back. It just bounced back between two different speakers and now okay. it's working. Now we won't have... We won't have technical stuff on the podcast, but anyway, so these are, these are things that we want to make sure any kids with challenges, with physical challenges have, and that's what we uh, are working on going forward as parents. Any last thoughts from you guys before we wrap up? Um, just that I've not found any challenges that we weren't able to handle yet. I've never had anybody come in with a challenge that we could not fit into a class whether it's the class that they were expecting them to go into or not, but I've never come across a challenge yet that I had to turn somebody away because we didn't feel like we could handle it. That's a great point. That's a great mm -hmm. point. I, I, I haven't either in the thousands of, and I think we're up to like 17,000 students in, in the Phoenix area that we've, we work with 
and I don't think we've ever had somebody that we couldn't work with. And that that includes kids and adults. But we'll talk about adults yes, later. Mr. Fleece, any any comment to finish up with? No, I think uh, as long as the parents are willing to support us, um, we can work with any any of the kids with where they're at. It might take a little bit longer. It might take some extra work, but as long as they're supporting and we're working together as a team towards towards their improvement, that always is the best. I think that's a great message to finish with for the parents and for you guys that are that are listening as parents. It's very common and very normal and natural for you to be um, a little bit scared for your children that that they may have a challenge and you're going to bring them into an activity it might not might not be martial arts it could be another one and to push them a little bit and in your you it's natural to want to protect your kids i want to protect my kid and keep them from getting hurt by uh you know maybe not looking as good as the other kids or maybe not uh maybe feeling a little down because they couldn't do something that another kid would do uh and and it might be hard to trust that the environment, like what we're going to provide and what we're talking about is going to support them through those times. Uh, there's, there's two pieces of that. One is, is that um, hopefully from listening to this podcast, you can understand that we, we love doing that and we love supporting. We love the outcomes that we get when, when the kids do it that long. But you've got to persevere long enough that your child will see the outcomes and feel the outcomes and feel their growth and feel their success. And that does take some time. And it takes some time with the parents supporting them and being behind them and getting through the day where your child has a rough day or just as one of two things, either has a rough day or they're sitting at home playing video games and goes, gee, I'd rather play video games or eat ice cream or watch TV than I would want to go do something that challenges me. And the only way they're ever going to be successful is if they do challenging things. The only way they're ever going to feel great about themselves is if they do challenging things. So ironically, the kids with challenges, particularly the physical challenges, the only way they're ever going to get very successful in their future is to continue to do things that challenge them. And whatever abilities they have, we push those abilities as far as they can go in a reasonable way, have high expectations, and then everybody's going to be so happy and proud and success, happy with the success that they get. And that's what we just love having. That's when we cry and we, we have tears come out when they're, when they test for their black belt or when we see them at the talent show, like master Sanborn said, and their family life is better and everybody's better. So that's when we see success. So what you mentioned, Mr. Feliz about parent support, that's the message that we give. When you do have parent support, all the things that we talked about are all positive. There'll be times that it's rough. And when it's rough, that's when you've got to work with us so that we can help you through those times and get to the big challenges. Because the better challenges and the better success you have, there, there'll be some rough spots in the middle. And we'll help you through that. Okay. Is that a good place to end, guys? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you the next time we're going to work on cognitive challenges and on all the other pieces that we're going to work on during this podcast series. So thank you very much. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Fleas. Thank you, Senior Master Sanborn. And we'll see you next time. Sure. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Okay, bye, guys.